while I was making this video, a lot of people asked, why? Why would you make a video about fish sex? To the unacquainted, I can see how this topic is taboo. I first learned of this mating style in the reproduction section in my animal behavior class. With the view that the purpose of life is to reproduce and keep your species alive, it is worth investigating the ways in which this is accomplished. It is always fascinating to see how animals find a way to continue their bloodline. The more unique strategies provide those at the bottom of the totem pole a way to pass their genetic code to the next generation. We're going to plunge into the waterways of North America and learn about the absolutely ridiculous reproduction methods of the bluegill sunfish. There are two groups of male bluegills, the parentals and the, and I swear to god this is the scientific term, the cuckolders. The cuckolders diverge into two groups, the sneakers and the satellites, hereafter referred to as the pipsqueaks. Around 70% of all bluegills fall under the first category, the parentals. These are the biggest, the alphas, the captain of the football team, the Ricardo Milos, that every lady bluegill yearns for. They grow to be way bigger than the other group of bluegills, but reach sexual maturity much later, at seven to nine years old. Once they are ready to reproduce, they will create and defend a nest. During mating season, a colony of densely packed nests will be formed by the males. A school of females will swim into the colony together, but break up to find a male, like every frat party. She selects a male by swimming into his nest. If the parental is successful in defending his nest, the mating process will occur. The male and female will swim in a circle until meeting in the middle, where they will touch bellies and release their sperm and eggs respectively. This process repeats for 6 to 12 hours until the female is entirely out of eggs. The male protects the offspring for 7 to 10 days before beginning again. The mating process will repeat for a month, during which the males will take several females. The sneakers and the satellites, however, utilize an entirely different playbook. They mature differently than the parentals. They reach sexual maturity at only two years old. This comes at a cost of their very small size. Once they reach the age of two, they become sneakers. They would also like to reproduce, but due to their small size and poor financial status, would likely have a difficult time in finding a mate. Plus, the much larger parental would quickly oust the sneaker from any nest and claim it as his own. Instead, they opt for the hilarious hit-and-run style of mating. They lurk in the shadows, hiding, biding their time, waiting for the opportune time to strike. When a parental male and female are mating, they will quickly dart in between them, expel their sperm, and run away. The parental will attempt to defend his lady's honor and kill the sneaker. Should the sneaker get away and survive long enough, he will grow to be about the size of a female bluegill, at which point he is called a satellite. This is when he will switch his strategy from a hit and run to impersonation style. The pipsqueaks do not have the defining bright colors of the parental group. Instead it has drab colors similar to that of the female bluegill. Because it looks so similar to the females, it can enter any nest without fear of attack. It will join the parental and female in their mating, expelling his sperm. The advantage of the parental group is obvious. He is larger and has his own territory. Most parental fish do not have to compete with the pipsqueaks group as they outnumber them by so much. However, the disadvantage is that there is a possibility that the parental fish will end up protecting the offspring of a different fish. Additionally, pipsqueak sperm is much more potent than that of the parental's group. This is attributed to their development. Parental fish's development is more focused on growing big with bright colors like a modern gaming rig. This makes it more attractive to females, unlike a modern gaming rig. The pipsqueak's purpose is to be a parasite and leech off of the protection of the parental group. Therefore, it can allocate more resources to improving the quality of its sperm. Some satellite fish can continue to grow and become parentals, but this is exceptionally rare. The average lifespan of a fish in the pipsqueak's group is only 6 years compared to the 11 years that parental fish live. I hope you found this topic as fascinating as I did. At some point, the smallest bluegills found an exploit in the very method that gave them life. Fish are notoriously small-brained. They lack the critical thinking skills to even conceive of this idea. Yet somehow, this behavior is exhibited everywhere bluegills are found. Jeff Goldblum said it best. Life, uh, finds a way. Thank you for watching. All sources used in researching this video are in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about weird nature behavior, please let me know in the comments.